This here is a gaming PC that does not work. And that's about all I know about it. Usually I have some sort of backstory, maybe I, I know some of the symptoms ahead of time, but in this case, I just know that it doesn't boot into Windows, and that's obviously a big problem. Now the owner of the system actually works in the shop across the street from Freddy Hernandez's, and if you don't know who Freddy is, he's Tavarish. He runs the Tavarish YouTube channel, and we've made a few videos with Freddy in the past. Very cool guy, very down to earth. It's, it's cool to see the overlap between PCs and cars. There's, there's actually quite a bit of that there, uh, so there, there's a lot that we have in common like talking about. But anyway, I, I met the owner of the system through Freddy, and uh, he let me know that he just couldn't post uh, couldn't, well, I don't know if it can post. He just said that it wouldn't boot into Windows. I'm not sure if that means it doesn't post or not. We're going to find that out in this video. Hopefully I can fix it for him, but worst case, I'll at least be able to kind of narrow down the component if it is a, a hardware issue. If it's a software related issue, then uh, we might just need to reinstall Windows. If, it, if the drive's dead, we'll just need to swap the drive out and of course uh, reinstall a, a fresh uh, copy of Windows. So we'll see. I, again, I don't know what's <laughs> what's up with this system. It's kind of a just a toss up, but that's what I like about this series. You don't know really what you're gonna get. I guess in that way, it's like a box of chocolates. Stay with me. Corsair's latest Virtuoso RGB XT headsets promote uncompromised sound with precisely tuned 50 millimeter high density drivers and Dolby Atmos baked in. The detachable microphone sounds incredible for a gaming headset. I speak from experience there and ear comfort from the padding is top notch. Subtle RGB accents through perforated aluminum or the icing on the cake. Learn more about Virtuoso RGB XT headsets via the link below. So by this point, you guys know the drill. We need to power the system on first and foremost to see what kind of symptoms are being exhibited so that we know kind of where to start narrowing in our focus. Got the power switch at the rear. Uh, the AIO did light up for a split second. This looks like a Z, I don't know if it's a 63 or whatever they call it, but it's the AIO that has the, the LCD or the LED screen uh, in the middle, which is really cool. I actually have the same thing in my personal rig. So we're gonna try powering the system on. Yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good so far. It's kind of weird. We get a post. This system works. <laughs> Wait, what? Reboot and select proper boot. To oh. Oh, maybe that's what he meant when he said that he can't boot in a window. So the system is actually posting, which indicates that the hard, the primary hardware at least, is functional. But the drive that I presume has his bootable volume installed is not being read by the motherboard. So uh, we're gonna check drive wiring first. I don't even see, he doesn't even have a SATA drive connected. There's no SATA cable running into the motherboard. I don't think this board even has NVMe support. That's kind of weird. Okay, uh, well. I think this will be a pretty easy one. And for confirmation that it is a drive issue, you can see that there's a uh, red LED lit up right here. That LED corresponds to a boot device issue. The motherboard sees that there's probably no boot device detected. Uh, it's really nice when boards have these features built in. You don't need the full on like Dr. Debug uh, baked into the board, but if you can afford one that at least has uh, kind of like these little notification LEDs off to one side, it comes in really handy when you are troubleshooting a build later on. So let's get this right side panel off here, check wiring at the rear. Again, it's very evident that there is no storage device connected. I wonder if he has a storage device in here. Okay, yeah, he does have, there's one hard drive here. It's a three and a half inch hard drive. And that looks to be it. I don't see any other storage drive, no SSDs or anything connected. So I think his, I think, I think that the boot volume is on this drive and obviously it's not connected via SATA. So that's why the system doesn't know what to do after it posts. Now while I was back here, looked over a few other connections. Like if you're missing a SATA data cable like outright, there might be an issue somewhere else as well. Um, if this person did all the wiring, uh, there is an obvious cable disconnected here. This looks like, a f actually this runs to the, to the AIO, it runs to the blocks. I think this is for pump RPM. If I'm not mistaken, because the pump is getting power through SATA power, uh, and if you disconnect that SATA power cable, then the pump stops working. The screen also turns off. Uh, so it's not really a necessity to connect this, but we, we should connect it uh, if you want to see uh, pump RPM and probably even like control pump speed uh, if that's something you're into. So we'll connect that. Um, looking over a few other things, the fans are all spinning, uh, which is good. The primary connections, obviously, those are all getting power because we are getting a post. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna clean up a few things down here cable management wise, and then I will uh, try to power the system back on with a SATA cable connected to that hard drive. So let's get this SATA cable connected here on the hard drive side first. Ooh, it is not even, it's 
not even screwed down. That's not good. These hard drives should be secured because they have moving bits inside them and the platters themselves uh, will vibrate quite a bit if these hard drives are allowed to just kind of rock around. Not that you'd be moving your PC a lot, but I mean, even when it comes to loading and unloading a computer from a car, um, that could be enough to damage a hard drive. So we're gonna screw this down. Now, fun fact, if you don't have hard drive screws, you can just use power supply screws. The threading is identical. Uh, and in this case, the hard drive cage doesn't have any rubber vibration mounting. It's not like a super fancy hard drive cage. Uh, so yeah. Hard drive is secured now. All right, that is not going anywhere anytime soon. That's a good thing. We're gonna connect SATA data cables here. We've got one on the hard drive side, also SATA power. And we'll connect data to the motherboard. There we go. Now there are still a few things that I wanna to do to this build. I wanna cable manage. I actually wanna install a vertical graphics card bracket that'll turn this card sideways so that it takes up a lot of the empty space below the motherboard here since he's only running an MATX board in a uh, full size or uh, mid tower, which supports up to ATX. I uh, also wanna dust a bit because there is a lot of surface dust here. Not in need of a deep cleaning, but in need of a dusting. Uh, but before we do any of that, we need to make sure that the system works now that we've connected that uh, hard drive. So let's power it on. That's weird, our power button's not working, but it is. It is connected. I'll check on that in a second. But uh, let's see if we can boot into Windows now, assuming there is an operating system loaded on this hard drive. Okay, looking good so far. So it does detect the hard drive, which is good. I think it's gonna try to boot into Windows now. All right, there we go. It's taking a little while. I think just because it's a hard drive and it probably hasn't booted into it in a good while. 2,000 years later. Uh, it shouldn't be doing this. I'll tell you what, the hard drive is making some very strange sounds as well. It sounds like the platters are starting to spool up and then they just cut off. Like, the build is trying to read data from the hard drive, but it's not able to. Could have a, could have a bad hard drive. That might be why it was disconnected to begin with. Again, I don't know why the system looked the way that it did, why it was in the state that it was when I received it. All I know is that it wouldn't boot into Windows. So it's possible that the hard drive is actually just shot. All right, so I'm gonna put my microphone really close to the hard drive so you can hear what I'm hearing. And that's it, we're getting those sounds from the hard drive. It's just repeating those sounds over and over like it's trying to initialize something. And we're stuck at this screen here with the Windows logo. What does it say? Does it say preparing? Uh, yeah, this is not. This isn't good. It didn't do this before, but I think it's tried to boot so many times that it just, uh, maybe his operating system is, is corrupt. We are getting a hard drive LED notification light on this board as well, which that's new. I haven't seen that before. So let's see if there's an image on here. Worst case, I can check with the owner, see if he has any important files on here. Uh, he'll want to try to recover those if he does, and I'll just give him that drive back. Uh, but if he doesn't, then I'll try to reflash Windows. I'll try to reinstall the operating system uh, and see if the hard drive is in fact good or not. And now we're getting a disk checking notification. Interesting. I don't usually see this kind of stuff, even with hard drives. So there's definitely, well, it's reading it, fixing the C drive. Interesting. Um, I'm not sure if this drive was transferred from another system or not, or it, maybe it is. There is like some minor physical damage involved. My first impression was that the hard drive was bad, but if we're able to read and recover these files, then uh, it's probably not. There may have just been some sort of conflict in the BIOS that was preventing this from booting into the, I, I don't know, into the volume. That's it's really strange. Uh-oh, that is not good. What does it say? Critical process dead? <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, this is potentially a lot worse than I thought. I think pretty much what it's gonna be doing from here on out is just boot looping, attempting to boot into the Windows volume, assuming there is one. And uh, once it decides that it can't, it just sends us either to the automatic repair page or back to the, yeah, we're getting this over and up critical process dead. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure this is still the hard drive, but again, it could be something worse. Now, the easier thing to swap would be the hard drive itself. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna swap the drive with one that I know works. I'm actually gonna swap it with an SSD, which would be much faster as well. And uh, we'll try to install Windows on that, see if we can boot uh, into the, uh, the homepage. And if we can, then we've pretty much confirmed that whatever critical process was associated with the 
uh, volume on the old drive, it's no longer there. Well, uh, that was a fiasco. It actually took several hours to get this thing working. Now, we're actually not booted into the hard drive that he had originally in the system. I connected a 240 gig SSD from A Data. Uh, nothing fancy, just a two and a half inch drive, but it is significantly faster than the boot drive that he originally had in here, which was that one terabyte hard drive. Um, turns out the one terabyte hard drive actually works. I've run a few integrity tests, seems to be in good shape. So I've just repurposed that as a game drive, just called it games and it's the, the D drive now. And uh, yeah, so we can load all his games onto that still. So we still got that one terabyte worth of storage for uh, games, which is pretty much all he had on there to begin with. And then I threw in a, that 240 gig SSD for a much faster boot drive. So all in all, the, the system should be much snappier for him now. Uh, the other interesting thing I had to deal with, seeing as though this is an X58 system, I think it's got a Core i7-920 in it, uh, was getting a, a bootable USB to even be detected by the motherboard. So a lot of older motherboards out there on older platforms like X58 and, and, and earlier uh, really don't like bootable USB drives that are 16 gigs or larger. Typically the cap is eight gigs and I think it has to do with the file size and the, the, the file system uh, that's installed, however this drive is formatted. Well, none of my 16 gig boot drives, and I had 16 gig drives, 32 gig, 64 gig boot drives, what have you, none of those were being detected by the motherboard, which means that I couldn't have installed Windows 10 on the new SSD that I wanted uh, to use in the system. Uh, well, I got around that in a sneaky sort of way. So I have an SD card here and I formatted an eight gig partition and then I loaded the Windows Media Creation tool and installed the bootable media onto that eight gig partition plugged it into the back of the board at the uppermost uh, USB 2.0 ports, and the board read it, it noticed it. Uh, so kind of tricked it into thinking it was a much smaller drive than it was, uh, got it to work, and we were able to install Windows 10, no problems at all, on that new 240 gig SSD. Now a few more things left to do. I'm gonna turn this graphics card vertical just to take up again that empty space. He can always revert back to the horizontal layout if he wants later on, but uh, I mean, he's only got one other full length PCIe slot here, and it's directly under the graphics card, and then the slot below that's not even a PCIe slot. Um, so not all that usable with modern hardware. We also need to clean up back here. So we've got this SSD that we need to mount to the SSD bracket behind the motherboard tray. It's just kind of hanging out right now, but this is the boot drive, so we do need this. Uh, this extra one terabyte hard drive we do not need because his one terabyte drive actually still works. And we need to dust a few things, uh, sort out cable management a bit, and he'll have a really good looking system again. It does look like this AIO is mounted, the block at least is mounted a bit crooked, so I'll probably remove that and fix it. I might even have the tubes run up top just so we don't have this uh, extra tube length kind of hanging here. And uh, yeah, he'll have a really good looking system again. So I'm not gonna show you a time-lapse, just gonna swing through this in three, two, one. And here we go. The build looks so much more filled out now, I think just looks much more complete. And uh, that's thanks in large part to the graphics card being turned vertically. So we're, we're hiding a lot of that empty space below this MATX motherboard in a case it supports up to full size ATX motherboards. Uh, this bracket here is actually from Cooler Master. It's their version two vertical graphics card kit. And I'll have it linked below in the video description if you are interested. One of the key selling points of this kit is that you can slide the card closer to the front or further back. There's a little sliding rail on the back here. And uh, if you slide it further to the front, it actually allows you to pass your HDMI cable, your DisplayPort cable through these rear PCIe uh, little frame rails here that typically line the slot covers. Uh, this case would normally require you to cut through these rails so that you could pass a cable unhindered uh, into the back of the graphics card. But in this case, we can slide the card further enough to the front that we just you know pass the cable through, rotate it sideways, and then connect it to the HDMI port or display port. Looks really nice. Now a few other cosmetic changes I made to this build up front. You can see I rotated the AIO block 180 degrees or so that keeps the tubing running along the top of the case. It's just a much cleaner look in my opinion. I also straighten out the block a little bit so that the text was upright. Uh, the four sticks of, this is DDR3, almost a DDR2. Uh, so this board actually supports six uh, individual dims, but he had four dims in this build and all four of them were in the furthest right slots. Well, according to the user manual for this Rampage 3, uh, you actually need to install the first three dims into the first orange slot, starting from the left, because we have four, we can populate all three of those orange slots. And then the fourth dim needs to populate slot A, I think it's called A2, even though it's the furthest to the left. Uh, so that's why the RAM layout here looks a bit weird. I agree it looked better the way that he had it, but in this configuration, we can take uh, take advantage of triple channel memory, which is quite cool. Probably not gonna change too much in the way of performance, uh, but this is how it's supposed to look if you are running four 
four dims in a six slot board. And apart from those things, we just took care of some light dusting. There was a lot of surface dust in this case. We wiped it down, cleaned that up, uh, just lightly dusted in places where I could see some dust build up. Also cleaned up cable management at the rear, looking much nicer now. So if you guys have enjoyed this playlist so far, I would really appreciate your feedback in the comment section below. Look, even if it's negative, just give it to me straight. Okay, you don't have to be a prick, right? But you can, you can still tell me flat out how you feel about a particular video or particular playlist. The reception for this one so far has been largely positive, um, very similar to the PCDC series in terms of uh, outright viewership as well, which is uh, very refreshing. I'm glad that people have been enjoying this as much as I have. Uh, and the fact that we don't have to charge anybody anything because we can monetize these videos. I mean, that's just the icing on the cake right there. So I can do a service to the community without necessarily charging the community for said service. Um, you can view the content for free on YouTube. And uh, that that's something that... Um, I, I've just I've been trying to figure out how I wanted to do it, and and these two playlists are are really, um, they're 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 really a breath of fresh air for the channel, and I'm really glad that uh, we have a lot of viewers in the area, in the Orlando, Florida area, who are um, gracious enough to send their systems for either repair or deep cleaning for several days at a time. I know it's hard to say goodbye to your to any rig at all that you've been relying on for gaming, for content creation, Microsoft Office, even just surfing the web. Uh, so I, I'm very appreciative of those who have given me a chance to create content around their builds. And I'm appreciative of all of you as well for watching these videos, especially as far into these videos as you're probably watching this one. Uh, so thank you for that. I hope this was worth it. I hope seeing the transformation, being able to fix this build was worth it in the end. It's supposed to be kind of a satisfying transformation. At the same time, uh, we're able to, to perform a service for uh, viewers in the area, and uh, I think this viewer is going to be very happy with the result here. So if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. If you have not subscribed, what on earth are you doing, folks? Click that red subscribe button, and uh, yeah, leave some feedback in the comments section below. You can find all of our troubleshooting gear in the description, along with our deep cleaning gear. I think that's about it. My name is Greg. Thanks for troubleshooting with me.